Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm going to be bringing you another commission that I had to do. This one is going to be The Comedian from the comic book series The Watchmen. I haven't really heard of this series, mostly because we're not really exposed to that sort of thing where I come from, so it's not like a part of our culture or anything. But reading about it, uh, doing research for this audio, it strikes me as a very interesting comic book series because it's very much unlike what you'd expect from a typical, if there is such a thing, typical comic book series. So The Watchmen is a 12-issue uh, limited edition series created by writer Alan Moore, artist Dave Gibbons, and colorist John Higgins. It was published between 1986 and 87, so kind of when I was born. It's very short. It's very short. Of course, it's been recreated since then and reprinted because people have wanted to buy it, and there's been a movie done after it, which I actually need to see. I don't know why I haven't watched that before, because probably because I hadn't heard of The Watchmen, so it's like, eh, whatever. So uh, the comedian is one of the main characters. The way this comic book is structured is not really centered around one guy, as it usually is in comic books. It's more like the interactions in the group. So the group is the Minutemen, which consists of uh, Edward Blake, a.k.a. the comedian, and five other members, which are all very much different. But they're not really like like what you see in X-Men or... Um, your typical series, they, they don't really have superpowers. Like, one of them does, which is Dr. Manhattan, which apparently can do some pretty amazing shit. But as for the others, they're not really that spectacular in terms of their abilities, especially Edward Blake, which is the most controversial character in the group. He is the, um, he's, he's the one that dies before the novel even starts. So the entire story is basically centered around the rest of the group trying to find out what's happened with Edward Blake, why he died, what's going on, and that leads to solving a conflict on a much larger scale than just his guy, this guy's death. So, um, The Watchmen, this, the main story in The Watchmen, it depicts an alternate history. So the superheroes had emerged in the 1940s and 60s, and they were very involved with the United States, helping him to win various wars, intervening with, where they were needed, etc., etc. So the uh, the U.S. was on the verge of a nuclear war with the Soviet Union, and uh, superheroes had been banned because, you know, that's what usually happens. The, the government isn't really all too thrilled about superheroes normally. And um, most of them were either retired or working for the government in a paramilitary organizations, black ops, that sort of stuff. So the main story is sort of focused around the interactions of the protagonists investigating the murder of Edward Blake. And that leads them to solving a, a conflict that would have, well, not really solving it, it confronting a situation that would have uh, involved the deaths of millions of people. So let's talk a bit about the main character, or Edward Blake, the, the one I'm drawing right here. He was born in 1924, and he died in 1985, also known as the Comedian. He is a masked adventurer, obviously, part of the Minutemen, and he is what you would call an anti-hero. Like, he is definitely, well, his intentions are good, but his attitude is very much unlike what you'd expect from a hero. He is described as being nihilistic, cynical, having very little regard for morality or human life. And he is depicted doing some pretty uh, heinous shit in, in the story, such as raping one of the members of the group called Silk Spectre, uh, who later on gives birth to Lori, who will turn out to be uh, his daughter. And he's also uh, mentioned as killing a uh, seven Japanese prisoners of war uh, just to win a bet and something like that, you know, stuff that, that's really attributed usually to, to negative characters and not superheroes. He'd been active for 45 years as what you would call a superhero through the help of uh, government and uh, government sponsorships, um, the press who had a very positive image of him. But he is this guy that basically smokes cigars all the time, wears that mask, and he is very skilled with weapons, uh, very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. One of the first uh, busts he ever did was with a baseball bat beating the ent an entire organized crime uh, group, you know, things that are very um, extreme in nature, very risky, not, not really like the flying cape sort of guy. 
you might sort of compare him to Nick Fury and also um, the Punish- Punisher, I guess. But he is not that positive as those people are. He is, he is a very unbalanced, imbalanced character. Now, the way he died and the way the novel starts off is goes kind of like this. In 1985, Blake was on a plane during a mission, and he noticed some suspicious activities on some island somewhere. So he infiltrated the island, trying to find out what was going on. And apparently what he found out was very much traumatizing, and he was it was very difficult for him to live on with that burden. So for some reason, he uh, broke into the apartment of a guy called Edgar Jake- Jacoby, who had uh, apparently fought Blake um, years before under the alias of Moloch the Mystic. And so, not sure why he broke in, but he did. I'm sure someone will mention it in the comments. Uh, Adrian Veidt, also known as Ozymandias. God, these people pick some really difficult fucking names to pronounce. He was apparently controlling the island's activities, and he had bugged Moloch's apartment. So he saw Blake uh, busting in, and then he responded by murdering him, beating him, and then throwing him out the window, and then he fell to his death. So that's how the novel starts, with the investigation of this incident. So everything we find out about Edward Blake is through flashbacks, through stories from the characters, so he's not really a a present character in the actual story. He's more remembered and slowly built up through various uh, encounters that are told by by characters participating in the novel. Very interesting concept, very much unlike usual comic books, and not really so childish in its nature, I think. This seems like a more serious approach to uh, to this genre. I definitely need to watch that movie and see what it's about, because this seems very intriguing to me personally. So anyway, let's talk a bit about the drawing. There's a lot of details here about his life, and I'm not going to go into all of that, because it's just too long. Quite frankly... I think that's the bare minimum I should talk about. So you, it was he was a superhero. He was a very controversial character, very interesting overall. So the drawing took about six and a half hours. I gotta say that was a long ass time. It's much longer than my usual, and it took that long because I was trying out my new notebook and uh, new pencils, etc. So just trying to get the hang of them. Very good paper, gotta say. It handled itself extremely well. I actually think this is one of the better drawings I've done in the past few months put a lot of work into it because it was a commission, so I got paid for it, so I usually tend to pay a bit more attention to what's going on when I do these as opposed to my usual drawings, but um, it's really, really quality stuff. And now that I look at it, the paper isn't actually full white, it's more of a yellowish tint, which is nice, it's not a problem per se, but it's just I wasn't really expecting that. So overall, I think it came out really well. Now, the guy that plays... uh, plays Edward Blake in the movie is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. The director of this movie is Zack Snyder, who also directed 300, This is Sparta, and all that. Now, this actor seemed very familiar to me from what I was browsing for inspiration, and um, then I found out that he actually plays actually plays Danny Duquette in Grey's Anatomy, which I actually watched quite a lot of, and that might be the most embarrassing thing I've ever admitted on the internet, but yes, I used to like uh, Grey's Anatomy, which is strange for a person like me, but hey, don't judge, you know, people have tastes, etc., I don't know, maybe it was just a brain-dead series, and I don't watch it anymore, though. And he also played uh, John Winchester in Supernatural, so he's kind of a TV series actor, not very famous, really. Hasn't played in that many well-known movies. He is more of a episodical character from what I can see on IMDb. But I guess he fit this character pretty well because of... Well, actually, it's what makes a good actor. Being able to play this bleeding-heart, sensitive guy and then play the one of the most negative characters in the, the world of comic book heroes. I guess that's pretty good. So, yeah. Jeffrey Dean Morgan... And actually, there have been plenty of attempts to make Watchmen into a movie, and apparently Zack Snyder was uh, the one that succeeded, so I guess they ran into quite a few difficulties. The Watchmen was pretty well received by critics, very um, admired, very respected, even though it was pretty short. But of course, after the movie came out, they had to reprint like a million copies of it because everyone wanted to buy it left and right. So I guess it was successful. The movie is rated, let's see... 
what is it rated? I think it's rated like 7.7 .7 or something. So that's pretty good for a comic book uh, inspired motion picture. I've seen much worse than that, like Punisher 2. That is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Seriously, that movie's terrible. So yeah, that's going to be it for now. Um, thank you for watching and please rate that shit. Hopefully the guy's happy with it. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.